Good morning everybody. It's about half six in the morning now and I'm out on a rather blustery morning to do a little bit of small river roving as I think we touched on in the previous video. We've got perhaps three hours this morning before I've got to get home and take over the child mining duties which has uh, prompted me to get up fairly early. Not quite at first light but we're not a million miles away. We're going to do a little bit of roving on this river. I tend tend to fish generally more in the winter so I'm expecting it to be fairly overgrown but we'll have a wonder about um, I've got my bag with me with a um, bit of mashed bread in to feed into a few swims to prime a few spots and then we've got some worms and some bread to use on the hook I'm going to travel very light just got my bag bank stick landing net obviously camera and my Drennan ultralight mini feeder I've set this at 10 foot. You set it in nine or 10 foot. I've set it at 10 foot today, expecting to perhaps need to reach over some bankside foliage. I've got my uh, Shimano Nasi, N-A-S-C-I. I think that's how you say it, real, on there. I'll stick all the information, all the details of all this gear down below in the description so you can go and have a look at your leisure, should you wish. I've got my standard running ledger rig on here, which I tend to use for small rivers and when I'm doing just general ledgering, um, I'll stick a link up there if you want to go and have a look how I tie this up as well to a video over on the Fishing Tips channel. Anyway, we didn't get up at silly o'clock to sit here chatting, did we? I think it's time, uh, it is very blustery. I think it's time to get down the river, isn't it? We'll, we'll get down there, we'll walk uh, along the stretch, prime a few spots, and then we'll get fishing. Well, I thought it was going to be overgrown. I didn't realise it would be that overgrown. <laughs> I guess no one's been down there for a while. Wow, it's such a different river than in the winter. Obviously lots of more bankside vegetation, but reeds in the water. Even some stream of weed. Cabbages. <laughs> wow. So different. <laughs> Swim's not even there. This is the advantage of doing this now as well. We make the disturbance of knocking the stuff down now. When we put a bit of bait in. I hope that's cave parsley, not a giant hogweed. Here we are. <laughs> this river usually has a bit of a, a green tinge to it, but grey today. There's a bit of water on though. Certainly not at summer levels. Just because of the unseasonal weather we've been having. <laughs> Trying to find a way in. <laughs> the easiest way I can certainly say most of these swims haven't been fished this year yet Not surprisingly, as, as I say, it's more known as a winter venue, this, really. We'll knock a bit down, but just enough, just enough to push a rod through. I am planning, at some point, to do a bit of a, a bit of a watercraft video to help out people who are fairly new to the to the art of river fishing maybe. Probably a good idea to do it on this stretch as well. We shan't do it today, but I think we'll do one and put it over on the Fishing Tips channel. The small rivers. I wouldn't say the watercraft's easier, it's the same, but it's easier to explain exactly why you've picked a swim. Because obviously you're not trying to point 30 yards away. <laughs> All the water is very close. Because I'm not sure how much of this river you've seen yet, but at the moment it's 10, 10 foot wide, something like that in most swims. Right, we've baited up about five spots. I think 
the next one we'll get up to we'll bait up and we'll, we'll fish it straight away so there's a bit of faster water uh, there's a bit of a pinch point a bit of faster water so there's often some fish sitting there right we'll get up to the next swim and uh, we'll get going so guys we've we've made quite a bit of disturbance getting in here unfortunately so it may be better off for us to come back but we'll have a little go here now we'll just throw a bit of this mashed bread in as you can probably see i've mixed it up very stiff for the reason of that i want it to get to the bottom i don't really want it to cloud up in the water now if you're not sure about how to mix your mashed bread up i'll see you link to a video up there you can go and have a look how i mash it up and get different consistencies now saving grace and making loads of disturbance today may well be the fact that the field behind me is full of sheep and they make a lot of noise obviously wandering about running about so it may be that we get away with it today but we'll find out so what we're going to do on this brilliant ledger set up I'm going to put a tiny, very light, tiny little Preston plug it feeder on. As you can see, it's tiny, it's about an inch long, and I can't get my index finger in it. Just with a little bit of mash bread on it next to the hook. I'm just going to plop this in. We baited up these spots we're going to fish, certainly most of the spots we're going to fish. So, you know, we could. We could really fish the link ledger if you wanted. But I do like that, just that bit of extra attraction right next to the to the hook bait. I think we'll try try bread first off. On the hook. I'm just gonna put a bit of mashed bread in there. A bit of Mr. Warburton's finest on the hook. Drop this in here. I've never fished this swim this time of the year with it so slow and low. I think we're gonna have a lot of this today. It's stuck in the foliage. I'm not being able to work out which way around it is. There we go. Right. Here's to a few nice chub. Perhaps some roach. Perhaps some perch. Who knows? Right. See what happens. Blow me. That's just gone round already. Look at that. <laughs> oh, he's off. Oh. Well, that's annoying. Oh. Blow me, smash me up. I can't believe that. I went straight round. He smashed me up. Well, that's probably done for this swim. Goodness knows what that was. This feel a bit funny. Perhaps it was a pike or something. Bit me off. Oh, that's very frustrating. I saw it pull round. And I thought, no, it can't be. It must be just settling. Because <laughs> there's a bit of flow in here. Then it went round again. Oh, how annoying. Oh, well, like I say, I think perhaps it was a pike because it's cut me off clean well hopefully we can get a chub this time and if that was a chub well I'll be amazed if it was a chub because it smashed me up I'm not exactly fishing light what it may well have done for the swim these swims and this stretch do tend to be sort of worn and out really Occasionally, if they're really having it, we'll get a few bites from a swim. But it's usually one and you're done. All right, get bites again already, look. Wow, I'm amazed at this. Well, I'm certainly chewing away at this bread. 
whatever it is that's down there. I'm thinking of Chubb have probably backed off now, though, unfortunately. Is there were any here? Oh, we're getting lots, lots of rattles off small fish. I think, I'm going to say, I think hooking and losing that first fish is probably done for it in here. I'll try a worm. Well, I reckon we might be done in here. I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll, have, we'll flick this a little bit downstream. Just maybe that the bigger fish, perhaps after I hook and lost that one, perhaps they've dropped a little bit further down. There's a deeper hole down there, I know from experience. All right, there we go, look straight away. <laughs> what we got? A greedy little chublet by the look of it. <laughs> Just sat in that slightly deeper water, a bit further down. <laughs> Yeah, just sat, sat down there. Let's try a bit of bread flake down there. I think we're going to get a lot of smaller fish on worm. Because of the wriggliness of them. Bread flake tends to pick out the bigger fish, usually. Although it does get whittled away by the smaller ones as well. Right, let's just let's try that again because that went straight away, didn't it? There's a bit of a deep hole down there. Let's just see if we can perhaps wink a fish out back there that didn't see what went on in here. I think we've upset all the bigger fish. Yeah, I think we'll have a move. So next swim <laughs> I say swim <laughs> in a very loose sense of the word fishing towards that tree you can probably see there I've not gone too close so obviously I don't want to spook the fish it's not the most comfortable fish in the world it's stung by stinging nettles and Trickled by thistles. But I actually love it, I have to say. It does tend to be why come and do this in the winter. Because there's a lot less, obviously a lot less foliage around, a lot less uh, a lot less cover. It does also mean it's a bit easier to fish in the river. Because there's less weed and that in the river as well. Well, I think we'll have to get out, stand up to cast here, just so we know exactly where I'm putting this. Oh, that's cracking. Couldn't have put that in better by hand. Cool. On it straight away, look. Got to remember though, this tip is very, very fine. So it really exaggerates the bites. <sighs> See, I think that's smaller fish. Maybe not. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's, I think that's slightly smaller fish. Doing that, let's lengthen this effective length of the hook link a little bit. I think we need to we need to wait for a proper three foot twitch on this rod. I think the quiver tip in here is either an ounce or three quarters of an ounce, so it, it exaggerates the bites massively.
Blimey, look at that. There we go. Well, this feels like a proper fish. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, keep them out of the edge. Oh, blimey. Determined to get any edge, of course. It's a job, I'm sure. Looks like a nice one. That's a reasonable fish. Oh, that's a lovely fish for this stretch. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's just what you need in it as well. <laughs> no! Brilliant. Well, this swim's probably done for. It's probably done for anyway, in, in all fairness, but people's dogs jumping in on the opposite side. Wouldn't mind, but uh, we're going to have a little moan here. I own a dog, and I've owned dogs for years. And, okay, sometimes they go like that and they get all a bit overexcited because they don't they see somebody they don't expect to see. But my issue is, there is a public footpath along there, but it's not there. It's about 50 yards into the field. But for some reason, people think if there's a public footpath across the field, they are okay to walk all around the field. And generally, you're not. It's trespassing. You're supposed to stick to the footpath. And there you go, dog's in the river again, a bit further up. Probably reckon that next swim. <laughs> anyway, enough of my moaning. But uh, it does annoy me a little bit, you know, you, you pay for a club ticket to come fish these places. These people come and wreck it for you for free. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. We're not going to get annoyed by that. But this is a lovely fish for this stretch. Absolutely cracking. Right. Yeah, he's a, he's a beaut. As about that. That is wonderful. That's a lovely fish for this stretch. Absolutely fantastic. Cracking. Right. That bite was pretty quick. So, we'll see if we can winkle out another one. We'll stick him in the net down here. I've got this, this guru net, which is very deep, the mesh. We may, God, we're all in the foliage here. Sort the fish out first. We may get another fish in here. As I say, it's often one and out, certainly when this dog's been jumping in the river. We probably are one and out, but you never know. There's also, um, in the past, I've had, I've had to call some perch in this particular swim. So, you never know. We might get a perch. Right, if we can get out of the foliage, we'll get back in. <laughs> oh dear, right, here we go. Right, he's down here in the net. Let's see if we can winkle out his mate. Assuming he's got some mates. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's a cracking fish. Lovely fish for this stretch. I would suspect we're probably done. Just very occasionally, very occasionally, you can have multiple fish out of a swim. Although I think we've disturbed this one far too much to be honest, to catch anything else big out of here. But it might be worth putting a worm on. 
chub are quite quite fearful fish aren't they and they may look well of all scarped now but it may well be that we can put a worm on perhaps catch a nice perch god that wind's picked right up I was going to bring the drone out today quite often think of to bring the drone out but it's just been so windy lately I just can't put it up and if I could put it up I wouldn't get any decent pictures anyway it'd be pointless it'd be buffeted about oh it's got very good stabilisation on it when you put it up in the wind it does detract from the footage oh, yeah. they're going to have destroyed my my bread no, we've got a bit left on <laughs> right I'll try a worm God, this is so awkward here, but I don't want to destroy this lovely uh, foliage. I haven't got a clue what these purple things are, but they're very nice. Certainly don't want to trash them. Definitely more of a fan of becoming part of nature rather than uh, bending it to your will. Right. <laughs> It is really awkward having not smashed all the spoil leads down, but definitely much better to have not done so. Right, right we'll have a few minutes on worm. I kind of do get the feeling it's going to just get chewed to pieces by little dace and little chublets and stuff. For very much longer. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed it's still on, to be honest. <laughs> we'll have another cast, but uh, I think it's full of small fish down there. We'll push it right under the tree this time. Last cast. We've got some far down as we dare towards the tree. under that tree and we've just got right in it there right just on the edge of it right we'll give it five minutes and then we'll move on Jag, jag, jaggy. May well be perch. He's me getting up. I'm the moment to steer these fish away from the near side cover. It is a perch. I thought perhaps it would be in there. Well, that's not a bad fish. Well, <laughs> thought perhaps we'd have, have a perch in there. And we have. Cracking, it's no monster, but <laughs> sit there on my feet for a second, Mr. Chubb. God, he's got his energy back, hasn't he? Well, that's about that. Lovely stripey. No monster, but fantastic. Thought he's going to put his fin up for us. He is. <laughs> Cracking. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Right. He's not going to be down there on his own, is he? He might even be with his big brother. So, once again, we'll, we'll drop these two. In there, as you can see, it's got a big, lovely, deep, deep mesh on it. This net. 
clink deep margin in here. I know from experience. Oh, there we go. Right. Worth another cast. Oh, I'm loving this. This is fantastic. Constant, constant rattling on the tip. There's clearly lots of small fish down there, which tells me there's probably not any big ones. Yeah, I think we'll have a move. We'll get these fellas back. I'm sure we could probably get some more bites in there. Off, off big fish. I mean, clearly there's lots of little fish around. I've only got a centimetre of worm left. I'm sure we can get some more bites. Off decent fishing there but I am quite keen as I say to to get them have a go in these other swims so we'll get these two fellas back there we go right let's get to the next baited spot so next one very uh, overgrown again as you can see I'm not even going to uh, knock down this bit of grass in front of me Keep that as a bit of a, a bit of a barrier. There we go. Put the rod over the top. Again, lots of plucks and rattles and taps. As you'd expect in the summer when the smaller fish are a lot more active. Hopefully that rod will hoop over in a minute. A bit of a pool in here, as you can probably see. It's a bit less obvious perhaps where the fish may be sitting in here, which is why baiting up can help. Just throw a few more bits in just to perhaps get their attention or get a little bit more bait down. It's probably been the best part of an hour since we baited up. We're getting some pools, but they're sort of, they're not little rattly small fish pools. They're much more deliberate. Oh, we did, we did connect. <laughs> I don't know what that was though. I only just spooked something else as well. What's this? Probably a little chub, I'd imagine. It's got me in the weeds. What is it? <laughs> I'd imagine it's a little chub, judging by the fact that it's put me in a bankside vegetation. Is it a roach? No, it's just a little chub. Well, little chub. As I say, he spooked something else over there as well. <laughs> well, there he is. <laughs> the fish that may well have done for this swim. <laughs> we'll keep him down there. In the edge. He certainly wanted that bit of bread. Right, wolfed it down. Right, that's it. Gonna have a move. Not a lot going on there. Take that little chublet and a few more similar sort of bites. So we'll, we'll get him back. On to the next. So guys, this, this is a swim, which in the last winter, it's always fairly productive. By fairly productive, I mean, you used to get a bite in here. <laughs> I don't mean lots of fish, I mean, it's usually good for a bite. But it's, a, it's obviously in winter, it's a lot less overgrown than this. You know, I've got some snags and breeds in here to negotiate, should we hook anything? Yeah, there's no guarantee there'll be any fish in here. As I say, it's usually good in the winter for a bite, but you know, things are very different in the winter. 
winter and summer areas are often very different, but it's very chubby, isn't it? With this overhanging foliage and snags. It's not particularly deep, I seem to remember. But uh, if there's anything in here at this time of year, I don't think it'll take too long to get a bite. I'm getting bites already. Probably little roach and dace and stuff. Tune away at this bread. Well, I think it, I think. Yeah, let's get him out quick. <laughs> Come on. Almost lift him out. Oh. Snag down there underneath me. Feet. Well, one of the guilty parties, I think. <laughs> Little chublet. <laughs> you see the sort of bite that that gave. A very demonstrative bite, although obviously fairly diminutive fish. We'll get him down there. Just on the off chance that there's some bigger ones down there. Do you generally find though, if you can have a half decent chub from a swim, it's usually the first one you pull out. Not always, but usually. Baiting certainly worked, but uh, not perhaps in the way we wanted. Uh, a bit precarious in this one. <laughs> We're gonna fish down towards that tree down there. Can, uh, can sometimes be good for a bite. Not always, but sometimes. And I can, uh, can fish it from here without obviously going too close to it. You've probably got a better view than me up there. But uh, I think I'll bring the camera down here and let me see anything at all. So it kind of defeats the object. Hopefully we can uh, we can get a bite in here. Bit of cover down there. Very very awkward to fish with this amount of foliage around the place. But we'll have a go. Well, it's gone in the water, that's a good start. <laughs> didn't actually see where it landed. Landed in about the right place. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> take long, does it? <laughs> I don't think it's very big. But he was certainly, uh, certainly after that pretty quickly. Trying to get under my feet, this is going to be fun. Trying to get him out of here. <laughs> Being a chub, obviously, he's trying to get under my feet. <laughs> Come on. I haven't you seen him yet? Oh, there he is, he's not a bad one. Oh, look at that. We got him. 
think that's probably done for the swim. <laughs> but we got him. Well, and it took a few seconds, didn't it? I'd say he's no, he's no monster at all. I heard about that. <laughs> I'd say no monster at all, but he was straight onto that bit of bread. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, we'll get him in the edge here in the hope that maybe we haven't wrecked the swim, but I think we probably have. Make sure he's all right down there. Cool. That barely hit the water, did it? <laughs> Before the tip went round. <laughs> Crazy. Well, as I say, I'm sure we've wrecked it. It's often one and out in here. Well, in all of these swims. So intimate. That's better. the session where you hope you don't get a bite. There we go. Right. I say I'm 90% sure we've wrecked it in here. But you just never know. Now, we've clearly spooked everything in here, <laughs> not surprisingly. They've all gone scarpering back under that cover, I'd imagine. So, I think we'll make a move. It's time to go anyway, and this was the last baited swim. Just tried a worm at the end there, but nothing doing, so he can have his freedom. We'll have a proper look at this fella before we put him back. No monster, but uh, beautiful, fresh fish. <laughs> Very lively after a rest up in the net, but we'll have a we'll have a quick look at him. How's about that? <laughs> Wonderful stuff. I say no monster at all, but uh, certainly very welcome. Fantastic. Right. He's been in this net for about ten minutes, so he's well rested. We'll get him back, and then we'll get on get him on our, his way, and then we'll get on our way. Off you go, chap. Fab. Well, I have to say thoroughly enjoyed that it's not been easy I didn't for a minute think it was going to be easy to be honest there's not enough water on this river it's very hard getting in the swims as you can see I mean it's so overgrown <laughs> you make so much noise getting into the swims but uh, we tried to negate that by doing it early on and and sort of baiting the swims up and the most productive swim of course we had a dog leap into as well I didn't enjoy that bit much but uh, yeah, it's been it's been cracking. Uh, probably we've had maybe three hours down here, two and a half hours, something like that. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. It's been wonderful. But I have got to get home, as I say, relieve my wife from the uh, childcare duties and uh, so she can get off to work. Now, I'm not sure what I'll be doing next. We'll have to just keep an eye on conditions. As I say, a little bit of rain due today, but I think most of the rivers are going to be running off now for the foreseeable future. Um, a few showers due perhaps later in the week but uh, nothing major at the moment anyway I'd like to do a little bit of trotting down the Avon uh, there's a bit of water on at the moment so perhaps a couple of days time we'll we'll get down there perhaps do a little bit of trotting down there well, I'm not sure exactly I want to get after some perch as well I do want to do a little bit of more small river stuff and one of the other tributaries of the Avon is uh, is in a reasonable state at the moment so perhaps we'll get down there anyway I'm waffling let's uh, let's go home thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support and i'll see you all again very soon